Okay, in this video we want to do um, some practice exercises on angle bisectors. This is from the Reveal Geometry 6-2 section. So let's take a look at these. Uh, we're dealing with angle bisectors. So uh, angle bisectors, you have a larger angle. It's divided in two by the angle bisector. And we just have to match up congruence marks and jump angle measures around. Might have to use triangle sums and so on. So let's see what we have here. So here we have a right triangle. This is a 43 degree angle. Let me see what they want us to do. We want to find the measure of A, B, E. So let's see what we can do with this. So this angle is 43 degrees. And 90 and 43 is 133, which is going to cause this angle CEB to be 180 take away, or 180 take away 133, which is going to be 47 degrees. We have a right angle here. Uh, this gives us a 90. This, uh, let's see, with these two sides are congruent to each other. So they're showing us with this that EC is the same distance from EA. So that means that E must be on an angle bisector since it's equidistant from both sides. And BE must be that angle bisector. So if this angle is 43 degrees. Angle ABE also has to be 43 degrees. So we have 43 degrees for angle ABE. Let's look at the next one. So uh, here we have this point A. They're telling us that it's eight units away from BF, which is a side of this angle YBF. And they're also telling us that this point A is the same distance, eight, away from the side of the angle BY. Therefore, BA must be an angle bisector. And what that does then is divides this larger angle in half Half the larger angle is 47. This other half must also be 47. Now this problem wants us to find the measure of YBA. YBA is 47 degrees. Let's look at the next one. Over here, uh, we're being shown that these two angles are congruent to each other, which makes this VK ray and angle bisector. Any point on this angle bisector is going to be equidistant from the sides measured along the same angle, which is the perpendicular here. So 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 8. So take 1 away from both sides and take 3x away from both sides. We have negative x is equal to negative 9, and x is equal to 9. Let me double check that. Uh, take three x's away, take one away. Yes, x is equal to 9. Uh, they want us to find the length of mk. mk is 2x plus 1. 2 times 9 plus 1 is going to be 19. Let's move up. Let's see these here. So for number four, uh, let's see what we have. We, uh, we're shown that point L is the same distance away from E, which is on the side of the angle WE, as it is from J, which is on the side of the angle WJ. So we could say that angle EWJ 
is bisected by ray WL. So here we have an angle bisector. So these two angles are going to be equal to each other, and we can set those expressions equal. So we have 7x plus 5 equals 3x plus 21. Take 5 away from both sides. Take 3x away from both sides. We get 4x is equal to 16, or x is equal to 4. That wants us to find the measure of EWL. EWL is this angle right here. We have 7 times 4 plus 5. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 5 makes 33. So it's going to be 33 degrees. Let's look at number 5. Let me move this up. So for number 5, uh, let's see. They're showing us that this uh, angle TRU and angle IRU are both 19 degrees. So that means that those two angles are congruent to each other, which means that RU ray must be an angle bisector. So we could say RU ray bisects angle TRI. And since it bisects, angle TRU is congruent and equal to angle IRU. Also, TU segment is congruent to IU segment. Because a point on an angle bisector is equidistant from the sides measured along the same angle, which in our case is a perpendicular. So 2x plus 5 is equal to 7x. Take 2x away from both sides. 5 is equal to 5x. x is equal to 1. It wants us to find the length of IU. IU is 7 times 1, or 7. So for the next one. OK. They're showing us that M is equidistant from side YU or YW and side YP. Therefore, M is on the angle bisector. And WM, ray, or ray YM is the angle bisector. So YM bisects angle PYW. And that means that these two angles are congruent to each other. Definition of angle bisector. So 4x minus 1 equals 2x plus 5. Take 2x away from both sides. Add 1 to both sides. 2x's is going to be 6. x is going to be 3. Now it wants us to find the measure of myw. m to y to w is right here. 2x plus 5, 2 times 3 plus 5, 6 plus 5 is 11. And it's a degree. Let's look at example 3 here, number 7. This goes with example 3 in the book if you um, want to check it out. So it tells us that A is the end center. Now, by definition, an end center. Remember, we had this a little while ago. An end center is the same distance from each one of the sides. So that means that if A is the end center, AK, AU, and AT are all congruent to each other. Let's see what else we can get from this. This is a 40 degree angle. Um, we have like linear pairs that give us 90s and so on. Um, let's see. It wants to find the measure of ARU. So let's look at ARU in this diagram. A to R to U. It wants us to find this angle measure right here. 
that's what it wants us to find a the me measure that angle a r u so let's see what we can do with this this a point is the same distance from r k as it is from r u so we could say that or we can know that r a ray bisects angle kru and since it bisects angle kru these two angles are congruent to each other which means that that angle aru must be 40 degrees okay it wants us to find the length of au or what au is au is this length right here au matches with at matches with ak each one of these is 20 degrees or each one of these is 20 has a length of 20 and it didn't really want us to find uh the x for some reason let's go ahead and find the x here let me switch colors so um this is an angle bisector a p a p a ray bisects angle t p u so 3x plus 2 is equal to 4x minus 9 take away 3x from both sides add 9 to both sides we get x is equal to 11 and so angle t p a has a length of 3 times 11 plus 2, which is going to be 33 plus 2, which is 35 degrees. And also this other angle, UPA, is also going to be 35 degrees. Okay, let's look at this problem down here. City planning. So we got so city planning wants to locate uh, electric car charging station to be equidistant from the three townships located on the plane. So they want to be equidistant from those points and find the approximate location of the charging station so it's equidistant from the roads. Now, if we wanted this to be equidistant, and as I was thinking about this, if we want this to be equidistant from the points, we're thinking about it's kind of like a circle idea being inscribed around here, which would be looking for the in center, which is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors. But for this one, they're, here they're talking about equidistant from the roads connecting the townships. So we're talking about equidistant from the sides. So what we're really looking for here are the angle bisectors. And it wants the approximate location. So what I'm going to do is sketch in the approximate angle bisectors. Let me get this one step larger here. I don't think I can move it over anymore. I can't really move it any. So let's see what we can do. So I want the angle bisector. Kind of miss it on this side over here, but let me draw it in here and then we'll zoom back out again so angle bisector here is going to kind of go up the middle so it's going to approximately come down through here that's going to be the angle bisector of angle b the angle bisector of o it's pretty much going to come up through here like this and the angle bisector of c is going to come through like this now i'm sketching this but we know from our past work that the point of concurrency or that the angle bisectors all have a point of concurrency and according to my sketch it's right about there in the center or right about there which is on mine is over three and a half up three 
So somewhere around three, three, four, three, uh, three and a half, three, three and a half, four, somewhere around in there. Um, you know, of course, if you did this with tools, you could um, do a better job on it. But somewhere around there is where the approximate location of the charging station could be. Now, if we were doing this with algebra, which we really won't on this one, uh, what we could do is, hmm, what could we do? This might not be available to us with the algebra that we know at this point. We could do perpendicular bisectors by doing you know, perpendicular slopes and midpoints, but angle bisectors are gonna be a little bit trickier than that. So uh, maybe later on in the year when we learn a little bit of trigonometry, we might be able to put that into play. So let's look at number 13. The Alumni Foundation is going to donate a new fountain for the high school's courtyard. Look at the color here. Uh, the entrances are located at X, Y, and Z. So these are the entrances to the courtyard, triangular courtyard. They want the center of the they want the center of the fountain to be equidistant from the sides. So again. This is an angle bisector problem. And we want to find the angle bisector's point of concurrency. And we call this the end center. So I'll show you uh, after we get this done what the incinerator does for us. So we want to sketch in, and again, it wants approximate locations. That look, means it's okay to do a sketch. We want to try to sketch in the angle bisectors. So try to cut these angles up the center. Right around through there is where that one's going to go. Right around through here. That's where this other one's going to go. And up through here. That's where the other one's going to go. Right about there looks to be the point of concurrency. Right about here. So we would say 5, 8. So around 5, 8 uh, would be where we would put the center of the fountain. Now this end center is a special point made by the angle bisectors. Um, when we talked about perpendicular bisectors, like if I kind of sketch a triangle here and think about the perpendicular bisectors, which would be like this one and this one and this one, what that does is gives us the center of a circle that we can circumscribe about the triangle. So perpendicular bisectors give circumcenter. So perpendicular bisectors give circumcenters, which is the circumscribed circle. Angle bisectors give incenters, which is the center of an inscribed circle. So let me change colors up. Uh, let's do yellow. So I want to think about this being the center, and we're going to have a circle that's inscribed inside the triangle using that center that gives a circle that's tangent to the inside of the triangle. So in center, inside, touches the sides at the place where the angle bisector would cut through and the circle is inscribed inside the triangle. Angle bisectors give incenters. Perpendicular bisectors, though, give circumcenters. So that's the point that's equidistant from each one of the vertices of the triangle. The angle bisector gives the point that's equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Okay, let's look on number 14. 
So MR is the angle bisector of NMP. They want us to find X. If measure of angle 1 is 5X plus 8, then measure of angle 2 is 8X minus 16. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. 5X plus 8 equals 8X minus 16. We're going to take 5x away from both sides and add 16 to both sides. So we get 24 is equal to 3x. x is equal to 8. And they want us just to find the value of x. So x is equal to 8. Let's move up. Okay, for this one, sorry about that. For this one, YL is an angle bisector. Um, so these angle one is going to be congruent to angle two, and we can set 8x plus 10 equal to 11x minus 8. So we're going to take 8x away from both sides and add 8 to both sides. 18 is equal to 3x. x is equal to 6. And it just wants to find the value of x. x is equal to 6. Ooh, sorry about that. I need to bring this back in. So let's move back up here. So back to uh, number 13. I don't know if that made it when I had it uh, blown up. Take a look at that. And this other work, uh, this diagram, we might have missed this diagram when we did number 15. Sorry about that. Number 16 is the last one. Let's see what we got. I determine whether there's enough information to find the value of x. Explain our reasoning. So um, this ray bisects this angle. Let's call this, uh, let's give it some names, ABC. Let's call this angle ABC. So, and we'll call this D out here. So we could say that BD ray bisects angle ABC. So point D is on ray uh, BD. By definition of angle bisector, if a point is on the angle bisector on that ray, it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. So uh, measured along the same angle, measured along the perpendicular. So this looks to be a perpendicular here. Again, we shouldn't really assume that. But this over here may or may not be a perpendicular. Now, if they showed us that this was a right angle and this was a right angle, then we would know for sure that x was equal to 5 because it would be equidistant measured along the same angle back to the side. But without these angles being marked and without some kind of a way of showing these triangles congruent, let's see what pattern we have. We've got a side there. We've got an angle here, but we don't have another side. These aren't right angles. Um, we don't really know anything about those angles or these angles. There's really not enough information. So what we would have to have would be information about um, angle DAB. So we could say X equals 5 only if angle DAB is congruent. If I want DAB, I have to do DCB, angle DCB. So this angle is an angle, this Ray BD is an angle bisector of angle ABC, but we don't know for sure 
that it actually bisects this angle here because we don't know for sure that those angles are congruent to each other. And we really don't even, you know, that looks like to be a right angle, but we don't know for sure it's not marked as one, so we can't assume that it's so. So this is the only way we would know that x was equal to 5, is if this measurement here is along the same exact angle, called angle beta, as this angle here. If both of those are the same angle, then we could say that this point is equidistant from the sides. Say two.